Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Wednesday, April 17th, and we are here trying to help you make better, more informed, less dumb financial decisions. You know, sometimes we all mess up. I got to be honest with you. I've made some dumb decisions in my life and there's no shame in it. I can say, yeah, that was dumb. I wish I hadn't done that, but we are where we are. And if you need some help getting out of a dumb decision or you want to avoid making one, or you want to actually try to make your options seem real er to you, like to really bring them alive, we encourage you to go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button, and let us know if you would be willing to come on the air with us. Today, we are talking to Amy, who's on the line from Los Angeles. Hello, Amy. Amy, I just had my first earthquake ever in New York <laughs> recently. So yes. now I feel like a champ. I feel like I don't really need to do that again, but thanks. Thanks for that. And uh, I don't know how you guys live with it, but boy, that was real. Yeah, but that was a light one. It I was know. Point five. Yeah, so. I, I know. You're like, yeah, yeah, baby. Uh, it, Amy, what's going on for you? Um, I am at a juncture in my career and life that I'm trying to figure out when I can pivot and stop saving so much and start kind of moving towards retirement and dropping down to more of a part-time work position. I know I'm going to work until 65 for health insurance, but I don't want to work as much as I'm working now. Okay, fair enough. And yeah. um, so, Amy, how old are you today? I am 55. So we're going to work for 10 more years. You feel good about that. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to do less, but I know I need health insurance, so. Mm. All right, well, you can buy that. There's a thing called the uh, exchange. You could probably get it, but let's see what's going on. Are you um, married, single, partnered? What's going on for you? Single, no kids. Oh, makes the planning a lot easier. Anyone else that you need to take care of? Parents, siblings, anyone like that's out there? No, I'm very fortunate that everyone is well taken care of. Are they so well taken care of that I can count on an inheritance for you? Um, yes, I don't, I don't really, I don't factor that in, but it is there and it will be there. So, okay. all right, well, let's not factor it in, except that unless we come up short and then we will factor it in. <laughs> Amy, how much do you earn right now in your fast paced, overwhelming job? Um, it, it is variable because I have, um, a variable income, but baseline, I would say about 160 to 170. Are you putting money into a retirement account? Yes. How much? I max it out. Max out, including your over 55, I mean, your uh, over 50 contribution? Yes. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. So 30500 this year into retirement. Is it pre-tax or are you putting into it a Roth? Um, so it's Roth. It's kind of switched at my job. It was pre-tax before, but in the last couple of years, it's been post-tax, but I'm still able like last year, I maxed out plus my own uh, own retirement. So I think I can get up to about thirty thousand. It's Great. a it's called a um, a Roth employee deferral, and then we also have a Roth after tax. That's great. So let give me a rundown of the totals in these accounts right now. Um, I have a four hundred three b value plan that's at three seventy six. Yep. And then the Roth. Um, the 401k is 23380 And what about... Oh, I'm more. Sorry. One more. Yeah. I have an old 401a that's at 10705 10705 mm -hmm. I mean, just because you said 403b, 401a, will you be entitled to a pension? No, unfortunately not. No. Boo, who? Okay. What about a brokerage account? Do you have any money socked away there? I do. What do you the got? Thirty-seven seven five eight. Thirty-seven seven. I'm gonna say seven fifty. Okay. How about cash? Um, money in the bank, safe stuff. I would say thirty-two thousand in a high yield. Mm -hmm. um, Seventeen thousand in um, CDs, so short-term yep. CDs. Yep. And then a hundred and eighty-one in a Roth. Okay. And now you're saving a lot of money. This is great. This is wonderful. Uh, do you own a home or do you rent? I own. Tell me about the house. How much is it worth? It's worth five five sixty eight. Let's call it five sixty, just mm -hmm. in case. How about mm -hmm. a mortgage? Do you have one? I do, and it's a, I have I owe two thirty five left on it. Okay, and what's the interest rate, Amy? Three point four. Okay, good. And do you like it? You want to stick around there? No, I'm planning to not retire to where I'm planning to retire out of state. So no, I'm planning to take the equity 
that I build in this home and be able to buy something hopefully outright. Okay, that's great. So you've got this variable income, you save like a mad woman. How much do you actually spend? I would say on average, I, I have like my baseline, what I'm, I kind of budget myself, baseline is 4000 and then a variable is about 1000 And then I really try and put upwards of 1000 into like the savings or wherever. But non-negotiable that I have to spend is probably 4000 I'm saying 5000 Can you give yourself a break? You can't really help yourself, can you? You're a little nutty. I mean, geez. Well, it has to be that. No, I'm putting in 5000 a month. Stop. Don't be ridiculous. Okay. So I like the idea. I'll take the equity. I'll buy something else or not. Whatever. You'll move somewhere else. Do you think you'll be in a cheaper state than California? Yes. Okay. All right. So if I could get you to retire before 65, Mm -hmm. would you allow yourself? If we can, like, make the numbers work, would you actually want to do that? Yes. Yes. Yes, God, please. Okay. Uh, The reason I ask that, I mean, 5,000 is not a lot. So if you just, your Social Security full retirement age is 67. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know what your benefit would be at age 67? Yeah, I think at this point with what I'm making now, it gave it at about thirty three to thirty four hundred. I didn't write it down, but I know mm-hmm. it was over it was eleven hundred it was about thirty three to thirty four. Okay. And then at age seventy, do you have longevity? Are you a healthy person? Might that be something that you could wait for? Um, I could, yeah. I could. So we think that would probably be up towards like thirty eight hundred, thirty nine. Uh, yes, from what I remember. I'm sorry, okay. I don't remember. That's okay. So that's great. Um, so let's let's kind of walk through this. Let's pretend okay. that mm-hmm. you allow yourself to retire at, I don't know, let's call it age 63, okay? okay. So we have to, so a couple of things. One is maybe if you did it at 63 and a half, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to take COBRA. You, I mean, you have health insurance mm-hmm. through work. You could say like 18 yeah. months of COBRA. Mm -hmm. That's expensive, but so what? Like, let's just say that for those 18 months, you burn the money up. You say, too bad. You're just going to, like, use it and spend some money. 63 and a half to 65 that, you you know, instead of 5,000 a month, it'll be 6,000 a month. All right? Okay. So we're just going to spend that money for those 18 months. Okay? Then Mm -hmm. at 65 for your $5,000 a month. From 65 to 70, you okay. are going to pull money out of your pre-tax accounts. Okay. okay. And again, I'm presuming you've left California and you're in some fabulous low tax place. Like you've like, oh, I moved to New Hampshire. I moved to Washington State. Okay. So you have mm-hmm. low, lower cost of pulling that money out. And you're going to live on the money that comes out of your 403B. And your 401A, which at that time, probably, you know, in a, we're talking about five, seven, eight years that you will basically have at least a half a million dollars in there and you'll use that and you'll use to live on and you'll pull it out little by little. You'll pay the tax that's due. Big deal. You'll be in a lower tax bracket. You'll be in a lower tax state. And then at age 70, your social security kicks in and then you can use your Roth and your brokerage account and whatever cash you have saved up and you'll now be able to live your life. It's just, it's, it's really easy. Now, if, if, however, I just want to be clear, if that freaks you out a little bit, I understand, then you can just work till you're 65. Like the longer you work, the better the numbers get, right? Because you're saving yeah. so much money. But yeah. you're in great shape. You got yourself and I'm not even factoring in that there could be some inheritance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I am in good shape. <laughs> you're in great shape. I mean, look, you're the second person we've spoken to um, as we record today mm-hmm. who is a high-powered, achievement-oriented single woman. And there is something going on in our brains, in our female brains, that is not allowing us to say, okay, wait, I'm, I'm, I've done okay. I'm okay. Everything's okay. I am only telling you the information. I'm reflecting the information that you're telling me. You have done all of this. You have made this happen. You have saved. I didn't do anything. I'm just telling you, you've done it. Like you're in great shape. 
And yeah. although you don't feel like it necessarily right now, like you could also ease up a little bit. You might say to yourself, hey, you know what? Maybe I would work till I'm 67, but I don't have to kill myself. I could spend, you know, $5,000, $6,000 a month. So I think you're okay. in great shape. I don't, okay. I, I don't see any issue here. Um, I will say that as a single person, I want to make sure that you have all of your estate documents done. You've yes. left assets to the right people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, if something were to change or something derailed you, we are here for you, but I don't see a problem, Amy. I really, I, I think, uh, your juncture, we've come to the juncture, you know, it's like, uh, Yogi Berra said, when you come to the fork in the road, take it, you can take either way, either way is going to work. You're in great shape. Okay, thank you. If you are like Amy and you're a high-powered woman or man or non-gender specific, whatever you are, and you just need a little bit of a, a boost and you want to know, like, am I really okay? Uh, again, you guys are doing all the hard work. I'm just reflecting back to you what I'm hearing. And these are great stories. So let us know if we can help you out. Go to JillOnMoney.com. Click the Contact Us button. We'd be delighted to have you join us on the air. You can sign up for the free weekly newsletter on the website. And you should check out our YouTube show. It's called Jill on Money, powered by the compound. Don't forget to lift someone up. Someone like Amy needs a hug today. Gosh, change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.